Hi there, Serial Trader here. Today I'm just going to do a video of WEED or Weed, and that's Canopy Growth Corporation. It's a Canadian uh, marijuana company that's uh, definitely positioned as probably one of the uh, strongest players with the coming legalization of uh, recreational marijuana in Canada. And I just want to do some Elliott Wave analysis and sort of uh, issue my thoughts on it. So as you can see, here we have a weekly chart. And I'm really only going to base my analysis off price data where volume actually starts becoming substantial. And that's because uh, Elliott Waves don't really form unless there's enough crowd participation to actually have, uh, you know, the element of group psychology come into play and form these patterns. And I'll, I'll kind of liken that to... Uh, you know, say you're with a group of a few people or a small group of friends, uh, you're not going to necessarily have much group think or group behavior or crowd behavior. Uh, say two or three people, for instance, you're going to act, well, hopefully you're going to act fairly rationally uh, at any given time. And that'll be it. But if you're in a very large group of people, uh, like say you're at a concert and, you know, a bunch of people just start yelling or doing something... Uh, that can easily just provoke a huge amount of other people to do the same thing. It's kind of a hurting impulse that humans have uh, built into their psychology. When they're in large groups, there's this hurting impulse. Uh, and just, you know, again, if you're in a group of two or three people and, you know, one of you started yelling or doing something stupid, you probably wouldn't start copying. You'd probably actually scrutinize the individual doing that and call him an idiot or something or whatever. But uh, the point is, Elliott waves really only form when there's enough volume, enough mass participation. And this company, uh, at least for a period of time now, has certainly had enough volume to form these waves. And that's why they're here now on this chart. Remember, I didn't draw these waves. I'm just labeling them as the market drew them. So I think we have a nice impulsive wave up, corrective wave down, very clear, strong third wave up, okay? Fourth wave in progress. And then we'll be looking for another wave up to the upside, uh, which, you know, I'm calling it wave five, but that doesn't mean it's the end. It just means it's the end of this uh, particular sequence that's being charted. So let me just quickly switch to scale to log scale. Okay. And that's because again, the, the difference between the high and the low of this price chart is greater than three to one. And that shows you that this pullback, uh, you know, percentage wise is certainly paled in comparison to uh, previous moves on this. Uh, and it just gives a little more proportion to it, okay? Um, I mean, this wave one looks much greater than this wave three on log scale. But, as, you know, when you come out and go to a linear scale, you know, here we go and wave three looks big again. Because as far as nominal price changes, it was. Now I'm going to leave it in uh, just uh, linear scale. And I'm, because I'm going to go in the shorter time, shorter term time frames, actually, let's go to a four hour because we're going to focus on this most recent, most recent top and then correction. Okay. So assuming that is some sort of a third wave top we have in place, what does it look like is forming here? Well, to me, the answer is fairly straightforward right now. To me, it looks like we're forming a contracting triangle. Let me just go ahead and label that, label that for you. So we have our A wave down, B wave top, C down. This is likely a D top now. And now I suspect we're coming down in wave E. Okay. And then once complete, uh, the expectation would be that we resume this uptrend. And coming off a triangle, that will probably be a very uh, powerful resumption, at least initially, in that triangle thrust that's so uh, typical of a triangle. So all I've done for these uh, trend lines is I've connected the A wave termination point with the C wave termination point, and I've taken the B wave termination point connected to the D wave termination point, and that gives our contracting trend lines and then the, this apex here. And now we can do what's called the triangle thrust measurement, which is uh, a fairly accurate upside projection once the pattern goes into play. And you take that to the apex, Okay, and then if I zoom out a little bit, what does that give us? 
That gives us an upward target, uh, a fairly conservative one, by the way, because triangle threats are often exceeded, oh, of around 48 or $49, okay? And let me just adjust our scale back. So that's that's pretty nice. Uh, right now, if, you're, if you are long or if you're going long here, your stop is definitely going to have to be 23.88. Uh, just below it, 23.87 is what I'd recommend as a stop if you're currently long or looking to get long here soon. And just a oh, I call it disclosure, I'm long uh, October weed calls, okay? Uh, so I have kind of a longer term uh, but still leveraged uh, position on it. And obviously I have limited risk with what I uh, paid for the calls in the first place. And I, uh, oh, I believe I'm long a couple different strikes. I think the 23 strike and uh, maybe the 27 strike are the two strike prices I'm long. So anyways, now we're working this, this E wave. Uh, and you know, what kind of areas should we look to for that E wave to, to go towards? Well, get some Fibonacci levels in here. And we're gonna be looking for one of these retracement zones to come into play. Uh, 618 would certainly be typical, but so would 50, which we're actually getting close to, or the 786. And really, anything is acceptable up to the C wave termination point here, okay? Now, a, a different way to trade this, uh, instead of just going long now or soon, and then putting your stop here, would be to let the pattern actually confirm. Okay, so what will activate the triangle thrust and the fact that we, you know, have a completed trekking triangle. Well, a good sign would be taking out the D wave extreme, which would be at 3146. Okay. And then at that point, you'd want to put your stop to wherever the E wave uh, made its bottom at and expecting higher prices after that. Or if you want to be really, really conservative, you wait till you take out the B wave extreme at 3471. Okay. And then you can be very confident that we're going to exceed this high quite nicely. And the high uh, was around $44, okay? The all-time high so far. Uh, and actually, uh, triangles present trading opportunity uh, regardless of how they uh, play out. So if this is incorrect, and this is actually just an initial A wave down of a larger structure, okay? And this is actually an A up. Hang on here, bear with me. A B down. C up, right? D down, a little E up. And then that was that completes, we break down, okay? And then we have an overall, let me just kind of paint the picture here. And then we end up having, right? An overall ABC or something like this. If that's in play, well, that can be a trading opportunity as well. And again, if you take out this low here, okay, or more aggressively, this low, once it's in, and once we come up in a little three wave correction for E, if that's what's gonna happen, once you take out that D wave, and particularly that B wave low under this interpretation, you could uh, sell short or buy puts, and then obviously your initial protective stop, or mental stop if you're using options, so you can't actually uh, have a true stop would be that E wave termination point. And then you'd, you just do kind of the opposite of your uh, triangle thrust calculation. Now it would be a somewhat smaller triangle since it was actually just a triangle B wave. So it'd be a smaller thrust, but you could do this and then take that from the apex, right? Something like that. And uh, you know, that would give you a downside target of well, I'm not going to call it 10 bucks, but you know, lower teens, you know, close to 10 maybe. Now, I don't think that's happening, obviously. Uh, in fact, I'm fairly confident that we actually have something uh, along these lines taking place. Okay. So I think uh, my bullish bias is warranted here, but you never want to be too sure. And another thing you can do as an options player is just buy a straddle right now. Because you know that this contracting range, this contracting triangle, is going to have a resolution. Now I'm leaning towards having an upside resolution. But if you buy a straddle, it doesn't matter. 
it's either going to spike down or it's going to spike up and that straddle as long as you can get one that's appropriately priced appropriately priced which uh i'm pretty sure you can especially if you get a shorter dated one uh that's going to do extremely well in either scenario so i just thought i'd point that out overall this looks and especially with legalization looming this coming summer uh, i think it heavily favors at least one more hype driven run to the upside uh, which certainly cooperates with the current wave count that i'm seeing here and you know just for illustration purposes we would be looking once this is completed you know something impulsive to the upside right something like that not necessarily exactly like that, but uh, that's the general direction uh, and kind of structure we'd want to see un un unfold at that point. We'd want to see a impulsive five wave advance, starting with, you know, an initial five wave advance, you know, for a first wave or whatever. So I just thought I'd point that out. Uh, I know not everyone trades these marijuana companies, and I certainly refrain from trading a lot of them because a lot of them are just kind of penny stock uh, territory still. But there are a few names that are actually quite liquid now and have discernible patterns, wave patterns, and they have listed options. So I believe they're worthwhile to trade. Uh, hopefully that brought some uh, insight to you. And best of luck with your trading. Serial Trader signing off.